Hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge, back once again with another episode in our Valiant to the Last read-through, in which I read all the Valiant Deluxe Editions for the first time. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at Faith, the Deluxe Edition, Volume 1. So, I read this because this is set, or rather it was released after Imperium, or after the Imperium single issues came out, although it was collected well before Imperium was collected as a deluxe edition. But um, I'm trying to have some kind of vague chronological read-through uh, as I read all this for the first time. So, Faith of the Deluxe Edition, this is the cover, this is the spine, and this is the back. Explaining what the contents are so on, which we'll talk about more in a second. You'll notice this says Volume 1. There is no Volume 2 as yet, although there is enough content to make a Volume 2, which we'll talk about in a second. So, let's uh, pop off the dust jacket. We've got the French flaps here, and we've got the French flaps at the back as well. Uh, end pages are nice and straightforward, just plain blue. Let's have a look at the cover. I do like the fact that the later Valiant hardcovers um, actually have an embossed cover that's in line with the with the logo for the actual character or the um, story within, which is nice. Uh, the spine, nice and clean. And then the back, plain. So what is Faith? Well, Faith is the standalone story of the character Faith, or Zephyr, um, but everyone really just calls her Faith, who's a harbinger that was introduced very early on in Harbinger Volume 1. So, let's have a look at what's contained in this. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is this contains issues 1 to 4 of the Faith Limited series, which is was called Hollywood and Vine. That was collected by itself in a deluxe edition hardcover that looks like this. And that's what that looks like. I don't own that. Um, I haven't bought it because it's a double dip as part of this. So that deluxe edition hardcover is recollected here, these first four issues. That's issues one, two, three, four. Then we have an issue of Archer and Armstrong, A and A. That's issue five. And then we have Faith issues one, two, three, four for this story arc. And then we have uh, Faith issues five, six, seven, eight. And this is, yeah slightly strange in terms of the, like this political issue, which I'll talk about in a second as well. And then it has Harbinger Faith issue zero, which is actually released well before the rest of these, and we'll talk about that in a second when we get to it. So this is the three story arcs, and then the Harbinger Faith issue zero, which is um, in this hardcover. So I will be completely honest. So this is Hollywood and Vine. These are the first four covers. Cover one, two, three, four. And this is the first story arc. Um, I'll be completely honest, I went into this with very, very low expectations. Um, I'd heard a lot of good things about this story, but also a lot of bad things as well. And it's a difficult one. Um, the, thing about, the thing about Faith as a character, I think a lot of it has been overshadowed by, for want of a better term, the identity politics of it. Where a lot of people were really massively endorsing Faith, going, oh, what we have here is a plus-size superhero for the first time, as you can see. Um, and then a lot of people sort of lambasting this and going, oh, it's terrible, it's being woke for the sake of being woke, it's being liberal for the sake of being liberal, and so on. So it's kind of hard for me to get a good idea whether this was going to be any good or not. Um, I was I was kind of wary. I mean, I was worried this was going to be like a token type thing. And I suppose at this point it's worth addressing something I did in one of my very first videos, which is when we were talking about Divinity, I mentioned that under none of the reviews that I'd read or heard about Divinity, no one had mentioned that he was a, a black um, protagonist, which I thought was unusual because a black people in the 50s in Russia wouldn't necessarily have been high up in the space program and thought it was unusual. But at the same time, I was just surprised it hadn't been mentioned. And one of the reasons for that is that the fact that Faith is a plus-size superhero has been mentioned all over the place. Like No one talks about this character without talking about that aspect of her identity and getting involved in the whole... Oh, is it just like a is, it, is it a token thing? Is it good? Is it bad? All that sort of stuff. So because it overwhelmed a lot of what I'd heard about Faith, I was worried was, this character is really more of a kind of um, political token head nod towards the idea of inclusivity than anything else. So I went into it with some degree of scepticism. What I can say, brilliant, 
Loved it. Actually, really, really enjoyed the story. What I'm going to say is, um, tonally, this is very different to Harbinger. Harbinger is adult, it's harsh, it's dark, it's grim, it's gritty. This is just much more fun and light-hearted. Yes, it has got some of the, the same things. There's lots of action, um, there's a fair bit of violence. There are some pretty grim bits to it, but it's just done in a much more light-hearted, self-aware, referential, tongue-in-cheek kind of way. And as a result, it's a much lighter read. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a, a kid's read. It's not a kid's read. But I wouldn't say it's a young adult read either. It's just it's just a good, fun, lighter read than the rest of the Harbinger um, issues. And I just really enjoyed it. The tone of this was great. The characterization of Faith is great. Faith, like pretty much all the Harbinger characters in that first hardcover I read, was a badly characterised originally. She was annoying. But in Harbinger Volume 2, she had some great moments, some actual sort of standout, wow, this is really clever, this is a cool use of the character. Um, and that's been maintained here. Now, this is by a different author. This is by Jodie Hauser, whereas previously... Was it Jodie Hauser? Yeah, Jodie Hauser, whereas previously been written by Joshua Dysart. Um, but I have to say, Jodie Hauser does a brilliant job on this. Um, it's really, really strong, really appealing, um, really fun, just an enjoyable read, and I, and I would strongly recommend it. As a result, and that tone isn't just for the first four issues, the original deluxe edition, but that is just maintained throughout. Now, quick before I before I move on too much, I just wanted to point out this first four issues, this first deluxe edition, is something you should pick up and read whenever you like. It's clearly set after Harbinger Wars and Harbinger Volume Two. It does um, introduce aliens again, but at this point, we're kind of conscious that aliens exist in the Harbinger Valiant universe. So that wasn't too much of a big deal. It also like nominally introduces Archer from Archer and Armstrong. Now I had no idea who he was. He had sort of some random character in this. So reading it with no knowledge of an Archer and Armstrong works absolutely fine. Then we get into our, um, this one single issue of Archer and Armstrong, which is a good issue and actually explains quite a lot about Archer and quite useful. I think it's going to be quite helpful for me for when I eventually um, get into reading the Archer and Armstrong part of my deluxe editions. And then we move on to the um, the longer Faith series, again, starting with issue one here. Um, so in terms of continuity, that's all fine. The one thing I guess to mention about this, this second larger series is that this is the first time it's mentioned that Faith has joined the supergroup Unity, which I haven't as yet read. Um, but again, it's just a passing mention. It doesn't sort of disturb the continuity. It doesn't make it confusing or anything to follow in any way. Um... Oh, and I also mentioned that she's back with the Renegade, which is why there's another series here called Harbinger Renegade, which is being released at the same time. Again, I haven't read it, but the fact that she mentioned she's back working with the Renegades and working as part of a larger team, again, doesn't seem to be a barrier for me to read it. It didn't seem to cause any problems or anything like that. Um, yeah, so what else can I say? Uh, really well put together deluxe edition. The art is strong. One thing I really liked about this... And again, this is getting into, I guess, the, the politics and the popularity of the character, is the fact that they kept Faith as a plus-size superhero throughout. It's one of her distinguishing characteristics, obviously. It's one of the things that make her sort of quite striking and stand out. And I really enjoyed the fact that the, the writer here didn't do what a lot, lot of writers do, which is very quickly make the superhero generic so they can write them in a much more generic way. Um, a good example of this is, for example, in the latter part of the New 52. I forget who it was, but someone was writing a Cyborg limited series. And they went from Cyborg Ray Fisher, um, Cyborg in the Justice League, uh, turning into... Uh, not Ray Fisher, sorry, Victor Stone. Ray Fisher's the actor. Um, but yeah, Victor Stone, who was a Cyborg... And then by the end of the series, he could turn himself into looking human again. It's like, well, if you're just going to have someone who looks human, then you're avoiding the entire conversation about this sort of man-machine duality and identity and all that sort of stuff. Um, I hate it when characters do that. You have a character who is um, known for having a particularly distinguishing feature, like maybe they, they've got an eye patch, or maybe they're in a wheelchair, or maybe they're half robot or whatever. And then, oh, we'll just get rid of that. It's like, well, why are you writing this then? Well, they don't do that with Faith. Faith keeps the line and it does it really, really well, which um, I personally respect a lot. So I'm just trying to find... Here we are. There's this weird election issue here. There's this issue here of Faith, which is... This is issue five, and it's... Half of it is the normal issue there, called Dark Star. And then it goes from being the Dark Star issue to being an issue essentially all about Hillary Clinton's um, run for the presidency in 2016, which is... It actually works okay. It's a bit jarring. It's a little bit surreal. And then it just carries back on with issue six. Um, 
But again, you know, politics is indivisible from this character, no matter how you how you look at it. But I thought it was done really well. I thought it was really enjoyable. It was a big surprise to me. I was expecting to be let down. I was expecting to find this to be some kind of tweeny token, teeny boppy thing. Um, of either a really annoying tokenistic superhero as the as the main character, or in some way they were suddenly going to wreck on her and she turns into some Amazonian Wonder Woman towards the end, which they don't do either. And I love the fact they toe the line, they stick with it, the tone is great, her characterization is solid. Um, really, really enjoyed it, basically. So, um, what we have here is we have Harbinger Faith issue zero. Now... This is, I think, the only collected edition misstep I've seen so far in Valiant. Because this issue is set before all the other issues we've been talking about. And it was released before all the other issues we're talking about. And it has some quite critical context for that issue. So this is set after the Armour Hunters event, which I haven't as yet read. But people do mention it. Um, and it explains what happens to Faith um after Harbinger Volume 2, prior to the first issue of the first Faith series. And whilst it makes sense, and it's, it's a decent issue, it shouldn't really have been collected at the back. That should have been collected at the front. It's not annoying enough that I'm going to have this cut up and um, custom rebound into what I want, but at the same time, it was just a little bit of a, of a misstep, I think. Anyway, moving on, we have the gallery, standard gallery. This is Faith with her outfit. Again, it's very bold giving her an outfit which is all white. Um, because, uh, I mean, for want of a better term, a lot of superhero outfits, especially for larger figures, would be darker colours. Dark is more slimming, etc, etc. And also it would show cleavage and it would be much more titillating and so on. But with Faith, they've gone for a much more realistic, much more restrained. And to be fair, I just love the fact that they've maintained this. It suits her character. She talks about her costume and what she should and shouldn't wear and so on. And um, it's just a good story and a good exploration of, I guess, an aspect of superheroes that you don't normally see. Um, as you can see, I've been won over by this. I went into it sceptical as shit. Um, but having read it, I'm like, damn, this is good. So, nice. So, um, what's going to happen next? Well, next in my deluxe hard covers... Uh, I think is Harbinger Wars 2 or Secret Weapons, but I'm not going to read that. And the reason for that is that there's still loads of faith issues to read. Now, this collects, as we saw, the first four issues of the limited series, and then the first eight issues of the larger maxi series, which means that I still have issues 9, 10, 11, 12 of the maxi series to go. And then there's a couple of limited series, again done by Faith, that come straight after that. Um, I think there's like a Winter Wonderland one. I think there's like one called Dreamtime or... I want to say like Faith and the Future Fighters or something like that. I don't know. Um, but basically, I've, I've got them all in single issues. Um, and I'm going to have a read of them. I'm going to basically read that, continue that thread of the Faith story and the Harbinger storyline, I suppose. But it's not going to be about a deluxe edition. So my next video will be all the remaining Faith issues. But it'll just be a video of me talking and then just some images on the screen showing what I've been reading and stuff. Hopefully that's useful. And if you want to read along, obviously feel free to do so. Cool. I hope that overview was uh, useful, guys. As usual, I'm keeping it totally spoiler free. If you're not happy with that and you prefer to have videos where someone goes through exhaustively every story beat and every twist and every revelation, every new character, then remember this channel is not for you. That's not the sort of videos I do. This is to give you an idea of how I felt about this, um, where this hardcover fits in to like a, a reading order for want of a better term and just the build quality and whether or not it's worth buying spoiler warning all these deluxe editions are built brilliantly well so highly recommended um yeah there we are let's leave it there today guys until next time stay classy all right thanks for watching everybody as always please like comment subscribe as always please follow me on twitter at i am thomas judge where i will post uh, a daily review of whatever comics i've been reading you can get an idea of what i'm up to on the channel um, and as always, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon.com and checking out my prose novel about superheroes. It's a completely original piece of work. The first episode in it is called Arrivals, and the series as a whole is called No Gods or Kings. You can find an excerpt of that on my website, nogodsorkings.com. Until next time, everybody, stay classy.